We're joined by Andy Kistler, chef to keep of the Swiss team here in Barcelona. Andy, thank you very much indeed for joining us. First of all, can I ask, how long have you been chef to keep of the Swiss team? So, end of this year, I will finish my third year as chef to keep of the and, Swiss team. And how did you get involved? Also, originally I came to this sport through my daughters. Uh, I'm not uh, a rider myself. And then um, three years before I became chef de keep, I was asked to join sometimes the team as a deputy. And then when my predecessor uh, finished, he, they were asking me if I will do, and here we are. I wanted to ask you a little bit about what the, the role involves. You're a, basically, when you travel abroad and you have a team or squad of five riders like we have here in Barcelona, are they your total responsibility when you get here? Yeah, uh, in Switzerland the chef de equipe can decide every Nations Cup and also the final. And for the championship I have to make a recommendation and then uh, a gremium uh, will say yes, uh, but I also there involved and my responsibility uh, is really big. But of course when we get to a final, we're here in Barcelona, we're hours away from the beginning of a very important competition. So now everything rests with you on the decisions. So you ha you, it is your responsibility to make decisions whilst you're here. Absolutely, but I'm working close together with our technical coach, Thomas Fuchs, and we are discussing everything. We will see how the horses are today, and then we decide uh, the team for tomorrow and hopefully also for the big final. Let's talk a little bit more about deciding on the team tomorrow because someone is not going to be in that team if your squad, I, you have five riders I think yeah. here. Now that, that might be very disappointing for somebody. Yeah, in this particular case not so because originally was our plan to come with the Olympic team including Yannick Sprunger and Bonjas and she couldn't come and therefore we were asking Nadia Peter Steiner to join and normally she will be number five. In a, all other competition we are coming and we are coming as a team of five riders and we are deciding on place but in this particular case there is a pre-decision made. And if you have to make a decision on the day of the competition or the day before do you sit down with the riders and talk? Tell me a little bit about how, how the process works no, for management. Uh, I'm, we, are, we try to have always the same team and it's the technical coach and it's the veterinarian and me. And then we are watching the riders. We are maybe also discussing with the team leaders and, and, uh, and, and then what we see and how, what we feel and what we also think about the, the rider and not only the horse and then we decide finally and the final decision is always with me. So you go and talk to the riders and say we'd like you to jump tomorrow or, or whatever and is that a, a telephone call or do you meet at breakfast or? No we always have exactly the same procedure we don't have big meetings but we are always coming together after a warm-up or after a veterinary check, or after shock, uh, after every class uh, per day in the evening, we are coming together in the stable. And then we are standing around the five riders, uh, the technical coach, the veterinarian, and myself. And then uh, normally I make a proposal, and, and we are discussing a little bit, and then we are feeling how, how, how the, the mood is, and then uh, I make the final call. Now let's go to the day of the competition. You've got a team of four riders, yeah. and they have to go in a certain order. I'd love to know how, who decides that? Tell me a little bit about how you get the also, order of, of the riders. Also it's exactly the same. Um, uh, I'm discussing also a little bit before with Thomas, and then, and then I discuss this with every single rider how you feel comfortable, what are you thinking, and then we are, comi we are coming again, we are coming together in the stable, and then I make a proposal. And the idea normally is number one must be a relative a safe uh, Somebody a who couple. 
well, we might, so number one, you'd like them to put a poster clear yeah. because that gives what confidence to everybody else. Genau, and it, he, must ha he or she must have a horse which is relatively safe in time because with the first rider, it's also a little bit depending, do we have number one or do we have number eight? Uh, then we have a little bit more time to see, but we, we, ne we never risk, if possible, a time fault. And then we need to have a relative safe and a relative quick couple to go first. And then the fourth one in a normal competition must be, again, uh, we are putting often the guy with the best uh, nerves and with the best uh, uh, yeah, maybe also a little bit experience in because often the last one has knows which result he or she has to make. Yes, so the pressure can really be on that last rider and we've seen this over the years many times. Yeah. It could be a win or lose, they have to go clear in a certain time yeah, or whatever. Yeah. We had it just uh, a week ago in Calgary, oder? Uh, Steve had to go clear and then uh, our team could come in the jump off and he did again what he had to do in these uh, certain circumstances. So someone like former Olympic champion Steve Gerdat, who yeah. you just mentioned, he is so experienced, He's, he, he, you can rely on him not to be phased at all by whatever he has to, he yeah. has to do. W where we also have to be fair and to look with which horses which rider is competing. Even if Steve comes with a younger horse, not so experienced, then we maybe put him into position two or three, and then we choose another one as number one or number four. So if he was but riding Nino, you could then put him in four and you know you've got a pretty solid... Absolu abs absolutely, we did it at the Olympics yes. and uh, he will most probably be again number four tomorrow, with, uh, but in this case with the World Cup winner Corvinian. And just one other thing, just on the order of the day, I'm interested to know, we all have s superstitions of some kind. Somebody might want to wear a particular shirt or whatever. Do some riders say, look, I really need to go number three because this is what I have dreamed about, or does that happen at all? Yes, uh, we have cases like this. Uh, we have, I will maybe not mention a name, but mm -hmm. uh, we had, oh, I can mention. Janika Sprunger always liked to have number three. Mm -hmm. She felt really good and she contributed a lot with good results to our team in, the, in, in many nations cups. And then I thought there was one not directly counting for us and I didn't talk with her in the afternoon before. And then in the evening I said, when we came together in the stable, uh, today I propose a different thing. Oder? And I said, Janika, today you are number one because with Bonchas she had a fantastic uh, uh, horse and she is uh, safe etc etc and then she said to me Andy I really thought the whole day I, I will be number one uh, uh, tomorrow because you never talked with me and then she did it and she finished clear and she said I felt it was even less uh, pressure on me with number one because you know exactly when you are coming you don't have another uh, result and she really liked it and now we have an option more for the future that that's a fabulous <laughs> insight and thank yeah, you very much yeah, for that yeah, yeah. and and of course mental approach from the riders is very important you know sometimes they may not be feeling very well or not on top form do they talk to you about that also, I'm, I'm watching the riders. I'm watching the riders also, for example, when we are course walking, etc. And, uh, last and, and, and then it's really depending who is the person, because they are all different and individual. And with everyone I'm speaking in another uh, attitude or in another way, because uh, with some you can go very direct, with some you are more coming a little bit uh, around and uh, uh, also it's totally different but I'm really doing and the most important I try to give them is uh, trust because they all are capable to do a super job but sometimes they are feeling not the same way and then I'm, I'm trying to s s tell them uh, be quiet, be calm, be trustful because you are so strong and good and also your horse is in a, in a good form also also go go uh, easy for 
And uh, last year we had a situation here in the second round because here the distances were really difficult. Um, then I, I, I have seen my team and everyone was a little bit talking and no one was sure about what to do. And then I said to Thomas Fuchs, Thomas, I think we have to take the team together, otherwise we will have a disaster. And then I, I, he, Thomas said to me, Andy, wait a moment because for the moment I don't I also don't know what to, to do. And then uh, we had a, a short break and then we took the team together. And then we have in Steve Gerda a wonderful, experienced leader. And then they talked, we talked together. And then uh, finally we decided the plan. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, we're here, of course, at, at another final, the Furious Year final here in Barcelona. Just run us through the riders you've got in your team. Also, we have uh, Steve Gerda here with Corvinian, we have Martin Fuchs here with Cluny, Roma Duque with Corrida de Treo, and uh, Paul Estermann, most probably with Lord Pepsi, and then we have most probably as no rider number five, Nadia Petersteiner with Capera. Well, thank you very much, Andy, for the most incredible <laughs> insight. That was thank very, you. very interesting. And of course, we wish you all the very best of luck over this weekend. It's very kind Thank of you. you. Thank Phil. you very much. Thank you. you. And good Thank luck. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.